and welcome to Career Center. I'm Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center, a resource center located in Naperville for people in career transition. Joining me on today's show, author, business consultant, and keynote speaker, Connor Kaneen, and business development consultant, Jim Wazak, to talk career trends. Up first, the aging workforce. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, before we delve into the aging workforce, let's uh, learn a little bit about who you are. Connor, we'll start with you. All right. It's uh, Connor Kaneen, Irishman Speaks, as you know, and we've known each other for maybe 10 years now. Yeah. I'm on the board of the Community Career Center, and I really enjoy that and the fantastic work you and the, your colleagues are doing. But as a, a professional speaker, I also try and earn a crust uh, speaking to associations and corporations to improve people improve performance and improve productivity with a smile. With a smile. And I put on this fake Irish brogue as well to make <laughs> yeah. it happen. Yeah. And I know you're on the speaker circuit and you're doing a great job out there. So. Yeah, it's a fantastic job. I mean, in terms of job satisfaction, there's really nothing to, to beat it, I got to say, Kim. Yeah, good. Well, thanks. Welcome. And Jim? Yes, I'm a business development consultant. I support <clears throat> business owners, entrepreneurs in the pursuit of their goals and dreams have a number of different ways we do that, uh, ranging from improv comedy to uh, networking to personal introductions to many other tools. And um, we always find a way to make, make things work. Yeah, I'll turn at our center. Well, of course, yeah, yeah, I love it. I mean, it's very fulfilling. And the best part is when you're, you're talking to a job seeker and uh, I usually ask towards the end, I says, you know, was that useful to you? And they say, oh yeah, now I know what to do. Yeah, you know, that's always good. Very, very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the best part for me is, and you'd probably appreciate, both of you appreciate this, is when someone actually lands mm. that you know they have, they've been having some difficulty. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get more of a kick out of that than I do if I'm speaking absolutely. to another audience. Absolutely, that's what we're all about, right? Sure. Yeah. watching that sure. happen. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I want to talk a little bit about the aging workforce because I, you know, I believe that after 2008, 2009 recession, we started seeing people stand in the workforce longer and working. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think for a lot of people, Kim, it's become an economic necessity at, the, at this stage. They don't have the income or the retirement put aside that will allow them to take retirement at the traditional 65 years of age, which probably is, uh, is no longer a realistic number given the fact that people are going to live possibly for another 20 years mm -hmm. anyway. But it is a challenge for a lot of people, as we see at the Community Career mm -hmm. Center, when their age is maybe 60-ish, trying to find something. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jim? Well, I think it's uh, it's a continuation of the baby boom generation. Mm -hmm. You know, when their first schools were crowded. You know, then colleges were crowded, and communities were crowded. So there's this, still this big lump of people there. I think that um, I guess I'll share a story. Mm. We ha had a couple over for dinner one time, and the wife of this gentleman asked me, uh, "What do you think about retirement?" And my answer was, "Well, you know, I think this. If you're doing something that you don't want to do and you're focused on retirement, why don't you stop doing it? And if you're doing something that you enjoy and, and fulfills you and is kind of your purpose, why would you ever stop doing it? Mm -hmm. I know uh, actually um, my brother-in-law is uh, in his 70s and he's an entertainer and he says, why would I stop doing it? This is my life, <laughs> so you know? Doing, yeah. So I think a lot of people uh, do it, but as Connor says, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing uh, at all. And I think, again, you know, because of what happened in 08, 09, people have to continue to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, ageism, because now that we see that, we're, we're also hearing and, and seeing um, uh, stats that speak to is still an issue. Right. I mean, when I'm speaking at the Community Career Center, I say, of course, you know that ageism does not exist. And of course, the people are laughing their sides <laughs> off. Um, the interesting thing is that when you were back in corporate land, you never accepted that ageism exists, except now when you're out trying to find a job, you can see it mm -hmm. in real terms. And it definitely is a fact, but I do believe that the job seeker can change that a little bit by coming in and showing themselves that they're energetic, they're contemporary, up to date with what's happening in the workforce and that they can offer a benefit to their employer. Mm -hmm. If you can't show those, you're going to be seen as being old mm -hmm. and over the hill. Mm -hmm. So the energetic piece is huge. I know we talked <coughs> about that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of it is in your own mind, how you project yourself. If you feel you know, you're old and nobody's going to want you, then that's, that's probably going to be a reality. 
Uh, I do think there is uh, a unique challenge, because I've thought about this myself, you know, being a little older. You know, I'd, I'd much rather hire a young person. <laughs> you know, oh. it's just easier to mold it and train, teach them the way you want them to do it. But I think the main thing is the energy. And if you come with enthusiasm and you know what you're talking about, you know what you can do, I don't think it's that big a problem. Mm -hmm. And staying relevant in mm -hmm. every aspect of the job. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I think the core thing is you've got to show that you're actually contemporary and you're staying in touch with what the current marketplace is like. And that's why I say, Kim, that one of the things that the baby boomers should have on their resume is a Twitter handle mm. on the basis that at least that shows to the person who's probably <coughs> the age of their daughter, maybe mm -hmm. 25, 30 years yeah. younger, that um, this person at least has some idea of what's going yeah. on in the, the real world. Yeah. Have a Twitter <coughs> handle and actually use the Twitter account? Well, what anything? I actually say is that you don't necessarily need to tweet out, but Twitter is actually absolutely yeah. brilliant for incoming information. Mm -hmm. You can track your target companies, target associations, target publications, mm -hmm. etc., and keep you up to date on what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then you can walk into the interview and say, hey, as I saw on your Twitter handle this morning, a Twitter feed, you're introducing a new product or you have a new uh, adventure going on, something like that. Yeah, that's that's really a smart idea to, to be able to share with the employer that there's yeah. that you're on their social media. Yeah, absolutely. So Twitter, Instagram, what about Instagram? Uh, so I think and Instagram is more social, but then yeah. again, it's, uh, it's again, becoming incredibly popular. And I mean, there's a lot of people out there who've got millions and millions of followers on Instagram, but uh, which, whatever it is, show that you're contemporary yeah. and not a kind of, oh, I don't watch, look yeah. at Facebook or I wouldn't yeah. have anything to do with Twitter, what's that yeah. kind of thing? You're dead at the interview if that happens. Right, right. What are some other ways? Oh, well, go ahead. yeah, no, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, this may be a little bit outside the box thinking, which you know I'm very good at, but just stay current on, on popular culture. Mm -hmm. and I know sometimes talking to my friends, I'll mention a, a current song or movie star or something, they don't know who that is, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, which I think, okay, you know, that's, uh, in fact, <laughs> a little bit of a funny story. So I was at uh, the chiropractor, this is a few years ago, and I forget how this came up, but uh, we were talking about uh, rap music and Eminem. Mm -hmm. And I start doing <coughs> a, a rap song of uh his, -huh. you know, and they're like just stunned, you know, that I know the words to this stuff. So I, I think uh, absolutely. And I think it's the energy, yeah. you know, it's, it's all the energy. Yeah. How, how should a more seasoned worker manage their job search? Probably no differently to the less seasoned work. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to know what your benefit is to the employer. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be able to articulate that benefit then to the employer. And you've got to work really hard. I mean, it is a tough, tough job trying to find a job, mm -hmm. especially if you're seasoned. It's the hardest uh, job. Probably. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's what mm -hmm. we talk about. It's the toughest job mm -hmm. we've probably ever done. But you've got to have a, a work plan. And going to the community career center, you get so much good advice mm -hmm. from people and so many, so much good coaching from people like Jim and mm -hmm. others there. It, it, I don't think the plan differs much whether you're seasoned or a younger person. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a, a plan, you've got to do it, and you've got to offer a benefit to your employer. Mm -hmm. well, you, know, you know, one thing I try to do with the people that I work with is create some sense of mission. What is it you're about? What's your, your calling? in life. And then you're not so much taking the attitude, oh, you know, poor me, who's going to hire me? You're kind of taking the attitude, this is what I do, this is what's important to me, are you aligned with me? Then, you know, let's talk. Uh -huh. So too many people, I think, go to, and this says actually all people, they approach their job search strictly with their skills, when what they need to do is combine their skills with something that they're passionate about. As Give a, me an example. As yeah. an example. See, you and I are like <laughs> thinking, thinking on the same, yeah. same wavelength. There was a lady who wanted a position in HR. Mm -hmm. And I says, well, you know, who would you like to be working for? And she said, well, I don't care. I just want a job. It's a horrible answer. Yeah. It may be truly what you feel, and maybe it's good to be flexible in your own mind, but that's not what you want to present to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So we did um, a little bit of soul searching and, and coaching and she decided she'd really like to be working at like a retirement home or a senior home or something like that. So with that target in mind, we crafted a message that she sent out to all her contacts. She had something like 700 people on LinkedIn. She got like 70 responses, which oh. is unbelievable. Oh. She couldn't even keep up. But because she had this mission established, 
she's able to, you mm -hmm. know, get a much better response. Mm -hmm. Jim, one thing you mentioned earlier is that you, um, you know, might be more um, open to hiring someone who's a little bit younger. What would make someone stand out for you or, you know, just oh, in I, general in terms of just being a more, you know, more seasoned worker stand yeah, out? Yeah, you know, I think it, um, just general enthusiasm, um, how interesting are they, what their skills are, their talents. Uh, there's uh, actually um, one of my hobbies is playing bridge and there's a lady at the bridge club who she's got to be in her 80s but she is just such a blast mm. to hang out with you know mm. and I, I think that's you know I guess I, I I probably hate to say it this way but you, you gotta have a little personality yeah yeah Connor what about you tell me someone I think I would uh, concur with that it's ultimately what is the the benefit you're going to bring and the more seasoned uh, potential employee has got a lot of benefits that the younger person hasn't got. They've got experience for a start, mm -hmm. that was the key one. Um, they have an ability maybe to interact with more people and they've got a, maybe a stronger network as well in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, try and identify what are your strengths that you can bring to the employer that will help them to improve their business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And another story I'll share, a fellow I know, uh, Gary, he was initially very frustrated with his search, but he ultimately wound up taking a position that was, you know, a little lower mm -hmm. position, and he finally loved it. You know, less stress, yeah, maybe a little less money, but you know, he was enjoying it. Oh, very good. All right. Well, up next, Connor and Jim, we will change topics, and we're going to talk on the changing workplace. We'll be right back after these important public service announcements. screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket. And it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Career Center. I'm Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center. And we are back with author, business consultant, and keynote speaker, Connor Kaneen, and business development consultant, Jim Wazak, to continue talking current trends in the workforce. In our last segment, we focused on ageism and the aging workforce, mm -hmm. and now I want to kind of transition into just workplace culture and what that is like now yeah. for both the aging workforce and, you know, our more seasoned, I mean, our younger millennials, if you will. Um, one thing I want to talk about first is uh, I... I about two years ago, I went to the Google office in Chicago, mm. and I was really <clears throat> impressed with kind of the loungy areas and how people were working and how that all seemed to just be natural mm -hmm. and normal. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it goes back to what is the environment that the people will work best in. And for millennials, it seems to be that the more laid back, uh, easy, uh, atmosphere or easy environment is the one that uh, people can work best in. I was doing a program for a high tech company in Chicago a couple, about two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just walking out at the end of it. And you know, you've got these impressions of the uh, skateboard like uh, lying around the place. I actually w was walking out, not paying attention. I oh, tripped no. over a blooming skateboard. <laughs> and I was like, this new environment is killing yeah. me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah, you're not watching where yeah. you're walking. That's true. But yeah. you've got to provide the environment that people are going to be productive in. Yeah. And if you feel that you're your workspace and your clientele can actually benefit from that kind of an environment. Well, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I, I agree with that. And I, I think with the millennials, there's a lot of focus on keeping them happy. Uh, I have two sons who are 27 and 30. Millennials. Yeah. Millennials. Yeah. And I think they've both had three or four jobs since graduation. And if they don't want or they don't like what they're experiencing they're or they're not change. getting where they want to, yeah. they don't hesitate to change. I think this you know, loyalty yeah. thing goes both ways, and the millennials, I think, have, have no loyalty. <laughs> I mean, not no loyalty, yeah. but they're more loyal to their own career and yeah. their own interests. So, yeah, that has to be definitely Yeah, I think it comes down to the environment piece. Again, just kind of their work environment. They want to be able to, you know, lounge around and be on the computer. Yeah. Well, or... you kind of touch on an actually interesting point because... It's it's important, and a lot of people don't understand this. Whoever you are, to try to find a company that's going to kind of fit your your mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. You know now, you know the Google environment. Yeah, obviously they get a lot of press. Works for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But if that's not you, you know you're probably better off in a more traditional mm -hmm. type of uh, yeah. But I think we're seeing a lot of a lot of companies kind of moving in that direction. So, well, they are. Right? Yeah. It's well, always well, whatever be will build uh, collaboration, I think that's one of the, mm -hmm. the critical things. I mean, we've seen that uh, Yahoo, for instance, no longer want people to be working uh, remotely. They're mm -hmm. actually asking yeah, people to people come back, in, uh, yep. mm -hmm. back into the main office environment again. An office environment that is probably totally different to what we would have been used to 30 years mm -hmm. ago. But it is a, uh, they're asking for people to get back together again to be more collaborative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about this because, you know, we used to have, you know, cubicles where you would work and right. people were really weren't encouraged to kind of be creative and talk to each other. And yeah. now we're seeing that. So. Mm -hmm. And the size of the mm -hmm. office determined the, what your position in the company yeah. was kind of thing. Right, right. I, so Jim I, had a huge office, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I remember being, I think it was at the Google space where they had um, uh, uh, table tennis and just, you know, things you can step outside the office mm -hmm. and onto yeah. the little ledge or balcony and, and play, t you know, play tennis yeah. or yeah. sit outside. So it's yeah. very nice, yeah. Right. Right. But what that also is uh, going to is that you've got to make sure that you've got some deliverables that you actually mm -hmm. do deliver on. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got uh, ways and methods, I think, for making sure that people are productive and are seen to be productive. Mm -hmm. And they're taking 15 minutes off to play table tennis. Sounds goofy. But if you yeah. go back refreshed and re-energized, you're going to be more productive. Again. Well, and you know what? I think this kind of speaks to how work in general has changed. You know, it, in the Industrial Revolution, you know, hourly was the thing to do because you were either building things or you're running a machine or something. So the hours you spent is really reflects your output. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's much more ideas and, and mm -hmm. trends. And, you know, if somebody plays ping pong for a half hour and then comes up with a million dollar idea, well, you know, so what? Thing. You know, yeah. that they're playing ping pong. So yeah. I think the, in a way, the work output itself is yeah. different. Yeah. I'm even noticing, um, and I don't know if you all have picked up on this, but companies are calling their uh, place of employment now campuses. Mm -hmm. right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to attract, I guess, the, the, again, yeah. the younger demographics. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, in everything, at the interview as well, we've spoken with us at other sessions. I mean, vocabulary is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, something a campus is more uh, friendly, probably, suggests a different environment to corporate HQ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you, again, now talking about more of that seasoned worker, how should they, they, they need to be flexible, right? They need to be, you know, adaptable to mm -hmm. this new kind of workplace, workspace environment. Yeah. Yeah. And for some, I think, Kim, it's actually a, a culture shock initially. So let's say you come up from a, a traditional manufacturing company and now you're asking to go into an IT position, let's say with someone like Google. Uh -huh. You probably walk in, you're wearing your shirt and tie, which no one else is wearing inside yeah. in the building. And then you see the, uh, the skateboards and you see the ping pong tables and you're wondering, what the heck? But I mean, so you've got to make sure that you're, it's like what Jim was saying, comfortable in that environment. And maybe you've got to kind of weave, your, say, weave yourself gently into it. Uh, mm -hmm. Initially, it can be a huge, a huge culture shock for people. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It reminds me of uh, a movie, and um, it, the, I think it was called The Intern. Oh, yeah. And uh, I can't remember his name, uh, but you know, well known older actor uh, was this retired guy who wanted to do something, so he took this internship. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, it was real uncomfortable for him. That was De Niro, wasn't De Niro. it? Yes, yeah. right, exactly, yeah. yes, thank yeah. you. 
And uh, well, at the end of the movie, of course, they sort of formed yeah. this collaborative relationship where he was kind of sharing his wisdom mm -hmm. and she was kind of sharing current trends. So, you know, I think what I would do if I were an older worker um, in that environment, I would befriend, you know, a younger person and say, hey, you know what, I need your help, you know. Mm -hmm. What does this help. mean when people yeah. say this or what are mm -hmm. these? What is yeah. OMG on texting, which hopefully everybody knows by now. But you know, I know that one. There's a few I don't. There's know. a lot of right, exactly, exactly, and just you know, look at it as an adventure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What about the? Uh, have you all seen the outdoor workstations now, where people are? That I've not uh, seen. Where companies are kind of creating outdoor workspace and. Right. Yeah, it really works really well in Chicago in January. Doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? exactly. No, so again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it goes back to. Uh, uh, Productivity, creativity, and collaboration. And if it works, where, if it works then uh, continue with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to do that years ago. What's that? And at least, but I'd have like a brief uh, team meeting of all my people. We'd be outside, you know, and then we'd sort of have some energy to mm -hmm. hit the mm -hmm. ground running. One of the other things that I've seen recently um, is the shared uh, workspace for folks who work remotely. So mm. there's, have you seen, have you, either of you? Heard of that or seen yeah. that? Yeah. Where they set up space, there's a like an incubator type mm -hmm. space where they set up and multiple people are just go in and they do their remote work from. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Kent Palmer from Naperville yep. Library, who you know well, mm -hmm. I mean, he's got the Naperville Launch uh, mm -hmm. workspace yep. down in the, the library and it's really good. So entrepreneurs are able to go in there and work and uh, liaise and interact with other people. Which is what's really good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But that's actually what I say to people in the, the job search as well, Kim, at the programs at the CCC. You can create that kind of a workspace yourself with a few of your colleagues. So, mm -hmm. for instance, you could go to the College of DuPage mm -hmm. and uh, three or four of you could walk in there at eight o'clock in the Monday yeah. morning, create your own little workspace, interact with each other, do your own work as well, have a chat, maybe get around the, the water mm -hmm. cooler mm -hmm. or something like that for a little bit. But it's like going, trying to create that corporate environment yeah. in your job search. And the benefit of that is? Well, it's a camaraderie for a start. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second benefit, I think, is that if you if I say to you I will see you at uh, COD at eight o'clock on Monday, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. If I don't say to anyone, I'll be at COD at eight o'clock on Monday. Well, maybe I'll go there. Maybe I won't. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a it's a, an accountability process as much as anything else, mm -hmm. and a camaraderie, support, helping each other. Mm -hmm. You know the other the other change that I see in the workforce, is, and while certainly. And everybody should be respected, mm -hmm. and nobody should be, uh, you know, sexually assaulted or, or made to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it is a, a different environment, and that's a, a change, Jim, for you and I. I mean, things that uh, were maybe acceptable, without being anyway incredibly offensive, uh, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. are no longer acceptable. Right. And the the baby boomer has got to understand that. And if you get fired because you've said something inappropriate or you've done something stupid, you've only got yourself to blame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hear about that. I mean, I've heard, you know, a couple of people have come to the center who have said what has happened to them and why they're at the center now, because they've said something that's it's inappropriate. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. one of the, I know someone uh, who uh, got fired because they were tweeting out on a company device mm -hmm. on company time. Nothing dramatic, but it was the company actually mm -hmm. said that's not supposed to be happening, mm -hmm. and they canned the person. Yeah. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about work-life balance. Like, how do you create that work-life balance in this new, you know, work um, place culture that's that's out there? How do you kind of create that? Uh, we're talking fiction now, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, yeah because <laughs> I mean, work-life balance is so difficult to try and yeah. implement. I mean, if you want to be successful in your job, uh, you you do put in a lot of extra hours. Yeah. And uh, companies talk about work-life balance, but uh, I'm not sure how many of them actually really support, support it at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? We're going to have to come back and talk about that because we're out of time. We are. We are out. The time flies when you're having fun. It yeah. does. Okay. Connor, Jim, thank you so much thank you. for coming thank on you the for show. Having us. Um, and then for those of you who are unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a career change, please visit us at the Community Career Center, 1815 West Hill Road, Suite 900 in Naperville, or search us on the web at www.communitycareercenter.org to learn more about the resources available to you as you search for your next success. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.